Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to go over getting started with TPU filament. So I've been kind of playing around with it for a little bit. I wanted to go over some of the things that I've learned. Um, just kind of give you guys a good starting point if you're interested in using it. Kind of talk about um, some things that it might be good for printing, some things that you definitely don't want to print with TPU. Just use um, your standard PLA or PETG, uh, really whatever your preference is there. But after that, we'll jump over to Cure, and I'll go through some of the changes I made in there uh, just to get the prints a little bit better, uh, specifically around print speed. And if you have any questions along the way, or would like any other videos, or have any other feedback, go ahead and leave a comment below, or join me on Discord. All right, so first let's talk about the characteristics. So TPU is a thermoplastic polyurethane, so what it is is really flexible and soft. So if you were to take a piece of TPU filament like this, you can bend it around, no issues. You can even tie it in a knot and then untie it. It kind of goes back to the other form. Uh, where if you have a piece of PLA, you do that, you can get about that far, then you're gonna snap the filament. Really holding these side by side, you'll understand the difference. You really, it's hard, it's one of those things that's hard to describe uh, besides the fact that it's a soft, flexible filament, uh, but the actual texture is different than PLA as well. So I did a bunch of prints here, um, mainly a bunch of calibration cubes, and then a couple uh, just coasters using, for example. Um, what I was trying to do was go through uh, some of the settings, figure out what worked better, and then I've got a good list of settings for a starting point. So taking that a step further here, it's like with the coasters, I mean, you can literally just fold these, flip them around or whatever, they're gonna go right back to the shape they were in. So it's really a cool filament. All right, so let's jump into the pros and cons here. Uh, pros are it's gonna be flexible and it's pretty lightweight. I mean, there's not much that's gonna be more flexible than this, maybe the nylon filament, uh, but I think it's pretty much about the same. Um, next one is it's not much more expensive than standard PLA. So it's not like you're getting some of the a lot more expensive filaments like some of the carbon fibers and stuff like that. It is a little bit more, but it's not a significant jump up. And then lastly, at least based on my experience, I didn't have any adhesion issues. Uh, it stuck to the build plate very well, actually too well in a lot of cases. Like here is an example of where I uh, ended up ripping off the bottom layer because uh, it was sticking too good. All right, so now let's talk about the cons. There are really just two of them, um, and they kind of go uh, together in, in a way. Uh, first one is it is a difficult filament to print. It's very flexible, very soft, so uh, when you're printing, if anything kind of gets in the way or if it has resistance in the line, it will cause issues, which goes into the second issue is it jams a lot. Um, to the point where like if you have a BL touch, you're gonna have to adjust the Z offset, make it a little bit higher than it would be if you're just printing standard PLA. Basically what happens is the extra resistance from it pushing into the bill plate uh, basically causes it to jam a little bit and then that jam gets progressively worse and it ends up to the point where it, you just hear the, hear the extruder grinding and you get things like this where uh, it just keeps trying to push the filament through and it's just grinding at the filament kind of bending it or pushing it out the side which I've had as well um, but I've got a lot of cases here where I had that same type of thing happen it's actually pretty common um, especially when you're trying to dial it in now I will make a note that I got this to a point where I was able to make decent prints. Um, I keep going back and forth and back to PLA most of the time. Uh, so I didn't dial this in 100% because you will have to make additional adjustments to probably your E-steps, uh, your flow rate, etc. in order to get uh, this filament dialed in 100%. And that's just not something I was going for. Um, but if, it's, if you're gonna be printing uh, TPU quite a bit, it might be worthwhile if you just know what those numbers are. All right, so now let's talk about what TPU filament is good for. Obviously, it's good for anything that you want to be flexible. So coasters, if you want it to be flexible, I would recommend that if you went with a coaster that you leave the top layer on because trying to put a drink or something on here with the infill just squishing down isn't going to be the best result. I was just playing around with it. Um, any type of bands, uh, like if you have a mask and you wanted to get the straps to have adjust around the back of your head instead of around your ears, I see those being a common thing that get printed with TPU. Um, or also zip ties, which is the main reason why I bought these. Uh, well, not zip ties specifically, more wire ties, um, but I figured I can print a bunch of wire ties just to clean up some of my cabling a bit. Um, so that's some of the things that you could use uh, TPU filament for. 
things you wouldn't want to use it for would be anything that you need to be solid or have any type of uh, foundation. You would not want to use it for like um, bookshelves or anything you're trying to put any weight on. It just, with the type of material, it will just push in on it and either fall apart, um, like if you had a shelf, or it would just, it just sink in and kind of just set into it. Basically, just think about what you're printing, and if, if it's something that you want to be uh, flexible, then it, the TPU filament might be a good option. If it's not, then you might want to stick with PLA. I would say for probably 95% of the prints I do in general, uh, PLA is just fine. Uh, then I do use PETG some and uh, just started playing around with TPU a bit more. All right, so now for the part that you guys are probably all waiting for. I've got four tips to help you really get started. Uh, the first one is after every print, you're gonna wanna remove the filament, even if you're going straight into another print. So what I had happen is uh, when a print finishes and it goes into its pause or park mode, uh, it basically causes the same type of reaction as it would if your nozzle's too close to the bed where it almost jams it. And if you go to just kick off another print, uh, it will kind of start to print an outline a little bit and then basically just print nothing, just like a completely clogged nozzle. And that's when you start seeing it chew into filament like this. It, the extruder thinks it's going, it's just sitting there printing but not actually pushing any filament through. Uh, so I found that if I actually remove the filament after each print and just put it through and actually just um, extrude 100 millimeters of filament, um, the actual next print works out well. Um, I don't have any issues with it being a false start or anything like that. It just works. Uh, so that was basically what I ended up doing after every print. The next one is you will have to adjust your Z offset. So with um, PLA, my Z offset was negative 2.81. I ended up having to go to negative 2.74, I believe. So uh, enough to make a difference, but you still want it to stay close to the nozzle. Uh, when the actual filament's coming out, it's thicker than PLA, and the extra resistance uh, is basically just causing that buildup, and it will cause jams. I had it happen probably 10 or 15 times. I had a bunch of different failed prints that either didn't kick off correctly or just I cut off midway through that I don't even have here. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind that you will have to adjust that. I would start by raising the offset by 0 0.07 or 0 0.08 millimeters to see what it does and then you can make adjustments from there. Um, I think, like I said, I was at about 0 0.07 difference. So that should be a decent starting point. All right, the next one is gonna be your print speed. Uh, so I had a lot of issues with these when I was printing at the standard 50 millimeters a second. Um, the top here, it was a complete disaster. I was able to correct this by actually reducing the print speed quite significantly. Uh, even when I was going into like 25 millimeters, I had a lot of the same type of issues. Um, but between 12 and 15 is where the sweet spot was for this filament. Now it might be different for um, the filament you buy if you don't buy the hatch box, but around 12 to 15 is where I ended up. I ended up just going back up to 15, I think for the last print I did, it tend to be okay. Uh, so that is significantly slower than PLA is, uh, but it's definitely needed for this type of filament. So I would start probably around uh, 15, maybe 20 millimeters a second. Uh, and then see what it does and then you can make adjustments from there. Uh, just know that if you start at um, the 50 millimeters, you are gonna see a lot of issues uh, just like these. And then the last one is make sure that you have your flow rate set correctly. Um, I got burned a couple times on some of the prints because I had I was using my PLA profile and I have my flow rate for the walls set differently. I think I have it at 95% instead of 100% flow rate. Uh, so it was causing just random issues. Uh, for example, on this, I had the walls and the bottom layer set at 95% and it was causing issues where the first couple things that was printing just wasn't printing. It was just putting a couple little dots there before it actually primed it right. So that extra resistance was causing an issue. Um, by actually putting it back to 100%, it did fix that. So if you see issues like that where it looks like it's missing the layer, uh, it's probably a result of the flow rate. I have it on this cube too, you can see that as well. All right, so uh, lastly, I did want to make a note that this printer here, I have set up with a all metal hot end and a direct drive conversion kit. Uh, that did make things easier. 
I was able to get some prints here with my standard Ender 3 Pro. Uh, it's basically stock minus the BL Touch I have on it. Uh, but with the Bowden Drive system, it was much, much, much more difficult because those jam issues or resistant issues are multiplied uh, just because of the length of the tube. Uh, so keep that in mind. You can get away with it. It's just it will cause you some headaches, um, but if you have a direct drive system, it's going to be much easier for you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump over to Cure. I'll talk about a couple of the setting changes I did there. All right, guys, so let's talk about what changes we need to make in Cure for TPU. All right, first thing we want to do is set our uh, material profile to TPU. All right, to do that, you're just going to click here and then go under Material, then Generic, and then TPU 95A. Um, typically, you're probably going to be set to just PLA for generic unless you set up uh, profiles. And really, I guess this step is optional. It just helps control the temperature uh, for the material build play and then your cost, that kind of stuff. All right, so next under uh, print settings, there's a couple changes we want to make. Uh, first one being temperature. If you chose TPU for your uh, material profile, it's going to give you a couple defaults by uh, just initially uh, based on a generic profile. But I tweaked it slightly. I think it came in like 228 I went down to 225 just as a starting point and then the bed temperature was empty on the generic profile so I just went ahead and set it to 50 uh, at 50 I've had no adhesion issues at all um, actually it's almost the opposite sometimes I have a hard time getting the print off of the build plate um, that said this is obviously going to vary based on the actual filament you're using uh, I do recommend printing a temperature tower if you haven't already. Um, I, I'll link to a video that I made kind of going over the process. Um, go ahead and link to that in the description below. Um, but I would start there to find the right temperature for the filament you're using. Next thing would be the flow rate. If you're using one of my profiles, um, which I'll link to in the description below, by default I change uh, the actual flow rate for the walls. I think I have it at 95% and the initial layer at 95%. I was having some issues with this uh, just because of how sensitive the filament is when printing. Any resistance at all can actually cause the print to fail. Uh, so I just switched those back to 100%. And honestly, if uh, this filament is going to be something you're going to be printing with for a while, I would recommend uh, just calibrating the actual flow rates and your E-steps. Again, I've got videos for both of those. I'll link to them as well. Um, but if you're using that same filament all the time, it is going to be different than PLA, um, just like the Z offset was different. Uh, so if you're going to be just doing a couple one-off prints, you'll probably be okay. Uh, but if you're wanting to dial it in or if you're going to be using that filament all the time, I would definitely go through that process. Next one I want to go over really quick is just going to be your infill. Um, I've been printing at about 10%, but the main thing I wanted to point out with infill is the infill pattern. Um, the TPU filament is very flexible by default, but if you want it to be slightly more flexible, uh, switching to uh, the more flexible infill patterns like Cross or Cross 3D is going to just give it a little bit more uh, give. Though I didn't notice the difference to be that significant uh, just because it's already very flexible as it is. All right, and then lastly, uh, this one is a big one. It's going to be your print speeds. Uh, I was going back and forth uh, between uh, 25, 15. I went down to 12 even. I found a good balance to be right around 15. Um, with PLA, your print speed is going to typically be around 50, but I was having all sorts of issues, uh, especially at the top layer at that speed. Uh, taking it down to 25 helped a decent bit, taking it down to 15 uh, pretty much cleared out most of those issues. Uh, but this filament is something that you have to print a lot slower, and um, I would recommend probably going right around 15. If you're still seeing some issues, you might want to lower it just a tad bit, but this isn't going to be something that you're going to be able to just print at normal speeds. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And that really covers everything on the Cura or Slicer side of things. Uh, that should give you at least a really good starting point. You might have to make some tweaks based on your printer from there, uh, but these settings have been working at least decently for me. If you have any questions about my settings or have any other settings that you would recommend, go ahead and leave a comment below. All right, guys, so that covered my quick overview and getting started tips for printing TPU filament. Uh, overall, this has been a pretty fun project. I enjoy working with it. Um, I would say that that was not the case initially. Uh, it was quite annoying trying to dial in right, uh, but I do have it to a point where at least everything is functional 
I might do some more with it. So if you guys are interested in seeing a more in-depth video, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord and let me know. And if there are any other videos you would like to see me make, uh, also go ahead and leave a comment below.